of you have heard about Montreal a hundred million times. But my question for you is not really about the specific screw job or whatever. It's more about you. You're the head of talent relations. You're the commentator for the show. And then the next day, you're going into work with all these people feeling different ways about it. How do you go into that? And what are your memories? Because there's a famous story of Mick Foley wants to walk out. How do you handle that um, after Brett going? Well, first of all, uh, regarding people wanting to walk out, I knew that last maybe one pay period and they'll come back. <laughs> and I told everybody, you want to go home, go home. <clears throat> no problem. No, you'll be, no, you're not going to be penalized. Because why would I want them in our lot in there in our locker rooms raising hell about what happened to Brett at, at uh, Survivor Series, whether I agree or not agree with the decision that was made? But here's what I did, Kenny. I use this old adage. I told them all the truth. You tell people the truth, you ain't got to worry about what you told them. Ten years from now, you ain't got to worry about what you told them. Tell them the goddamn truth. And of course, you know they'll. What's the old deal? If you can't handle the truth, if you can't handle the truth, then that's their fault, not yours. Give it to us. Now you're clear, you're clean. So I told them, I said, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was news to me. No one informed me that this was the plan at all. And some, most believed me, because I had not lied to them prior to that. Some thought I was taking it too far. I couldn't be telling the truth. I had to know. I didn't know. And uh, so I, that's kind of what I said. I said, you guys are tore up about this. You got to go home, go home, we'll get you home. Let me know when your sensitivities ease and you're able to come back to work as a restaurant. And uh, I, I don't know, I can't remember. Do anybody remember we had anybody go home at all? I think they met fully home for one day, then Cornette brought him back. Until he missed catering and he got back there. <laughs> Well, they don't make mine. We both have a communist. We both like to eat. Uh, and we like free food. No, I, don't, I didn't think about the major walk out. Most people are just confused. And then they, then they talk to their girlfriends or their wives or the rats or whatever. <laughs> they tell them that it's all. Well, then it could happen to bread. It could happen to anybody. It could happen to you, baby. Baby, it could happen to you. What are you going to do, baby? You have to you. <laughs> you know, you want to say, shut up, baby. <laughs> Get another tattoo and leave me alone for a few minutes. <laughs> then bring me the goddamn ice. <laughs> so you tell them the truth, Kenny. <laughs> tell them the truth, and uh, thank you. That was an ad by the way. <laughs> I, have, I have a teleprompter in my shoes. Uh, <laughs> It, just tell them the truth. And they have to, you have to understand where both parties are coming from. Did I agree with it? No, I was very honest then. I told Vince this. So I, they asked me if I agreed with it. I said, no. But it's not my company. He didn't ask me if I agreed with it or not. I didn't know they were going to do that. I know there were issues. Because here's the deal. I, I, and I love Brent. I really do. He's a good man. Boy, he's a good hand. And, uh, I love calling his matches. But boy, you know. Is it really? I guess it is to him. I, I, I would not die on that hill. Drop the title in Montreal or mm. or his backyard in Calgary. Who gives a shit? You're making a awful lot of money. And the company here has facilitated your value, the enhanced your value, before you really get this unheard of money deal from WCW. That's guaranteed for X number of years. So, really? You're not going to... So I, they didn't want to do, they didn't want to do anything uh, like that. So it really put everything and squeezed everything in. And it's not advantageous for everybody in the long run. I understand what Brent did what he did. I certainly understand what Brent Vince did what he did. But I was caught in the middle of some of that stuff a little, a little bit. And uh, all you got to remember is tell the truth. You got to talk your way out of it. Tell the truth. It's, here it is. I'll tell you the truth. You're going to be so pissed at me and have that. But, you know, if anybody listens to that commentary, as we went off the air, I was—I mean, I was—I was told to get off the air by an eight-second count. We're, we're leaving the air to air at eight, seven. So no matter, no matter Lawler's in the mid, mid sentence or me, or we're trying to collect our thoughts, you got eight seconds to collect whatever hell stuff you can to get the hell out of there. 
That's what it was. So it was awkward getting off there, that's what I'm trying to say. So you can tell we didn't know. Your big show starts to get up and he goes, He just completely no sold it. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, did you just shit yourself? 